In this video, let's look at motion value in Framer Motion. It's my favorite secret weapon, which allows us to spy on an animation and create a chain of animations that react on the original one. Let's check it out. Let's say we want this guy to punch with both fists, but we don't really want to simply copy the props right here, this animate. We can define a thing called a motion value to spy on this animation. Line number seven, we're gonna create a constant which is called scale left, and we're gonna call a React hook, use motion value, and this is a hook provided uh, by Framer Motion, and uh, its parameter is uh, is like it's a default value. I we set the scale to be one by default. Now, if we use it uh, in the style prop for this div, line number 11, this style prop works in the same way as in a standard HTML tag, except that it's beefed up to accept new properties. For example, this scale and uh, its value can be a number as usual, or in this case, a motion value. This gives us the ability to spy on the animation uh, that is, the value stored inside scale left changes along with this animation defined by this uh, animate prop. Now let's use it on the other fist, right here, line number 23, and let's uh, convert it to motion component first. And we've got a transform scale x uh, minus 1 here, that is to flip this emoji so that, so that it looks more realistic. Uh, don't forget that uh, now we have an enhanced style prop, so we don't need this transform anymore. We can actually use a scale x. The value is minus 1, which is a lot shorter than uh, the original way. Now if we say scale, scale left, which is the motion value we just uh, defined, and uh, guess what it's going to look like? That looks pretty good, right? But that's not all of it. We can create a new motion value that changes based on the math formula. So if you go back to the start of the uh, file right here, line number eight, I'm gonna define another constant. And this time we're gonna call another hook, use transform, which is provided by Framer Motion as well. Its first parameter is the original motion value. So we'll, we'll set it uh, as a scale left. And the second parameter can be a function uh, that uh, performs the transform. So we can say like that. Now let's use it in the right fist. Right here, instead of a scale right uh, left, now we change it to right, line number 24. Guess what's going to happen? Looks pretty good, right? We can do even more. What if we want to rotate the head a bit to when the guy is punching? So let's go back to the start of the component, line number 9. And the use transform. And the original value still scale left. And this time we're going to use another form of a tr use transform, uh, which allows us to specify input and the output ranges. So the first parameter, the second parameter actually, is the input range. So let's uh, say, 0.5 to 2, and uh, the second is output range, right? So when the scale left is 0 0.5, it, when, uh, when, when the fist is pretty small, we want to tilt the head to the left. And uh, when it's uh, it's uh, it's really big, and we, we tilt it to the right. And then uh, if we go to line number 24 to actually use this style, Now scale uh, style equals to rotate, and uh, it's going to be head rotate, and um, and I actually made an error here, so I made a typo. It's not supposed to be capitalized M, and you see that looks uh, looks pretty nice, right? And except that we probably want to move this uh, Z index to the fist. Here. One more thing, and this is actually pretty important. The animation is going long here all the time, right? 
uh, which means those motion values, these head rotate and or scale right or scale left, these values keep changing all the time. Guess how many times had this component been rendered? This is a fistful component, and uh, we're gonna put a console log to find that out, right? Let's say render, and now if we refresh the browser and check out the console, and guess how many render that'll be there? There's only one render, right? So that means updates to a motion value don't trigger any re-render. That's how Framer Motion achieves smooth animations. All right, this looks quite useful, right? We can use a motion value in the style prop to keep track of an animated value. Then we can use a use transform hook to create a chain of new motion values that change along with the original value. We can create some very interesting interactions and animations with this approach. You are going to see more examples soon.